It's Friday, July 8th, 2022, and welcome to episode 11 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. In this edition of the Postcast, pay raises on the ballot in November, Measure B is official, a fixture of the Alameda art scene passes the torch, and the 4th of July parade makes a comeback. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story... On Tuesday, the Alameda City Council voted to submit a ballot measure for November's general election. The subject? Salaries for the council. The salaries for the mayor and the council might surprise you. Currently, the mayor receives $3,600 per year, while council members are paid $1,200. Those figures were set in 1970 and 1977, respectively, and have remained unchanged since then. By comparison, the average East Bay City pays their mayor just under $44,000, with council member salaries ranging just over $25,000. As reported by Karen Jensen on AlamedaPost.com, the council has proposed salaries that would be capped at 30% of the median salary for all occupations in the San Francisco-Oakland-Hayward area. That would translate to just under $26,000 a year. All public comment ran in favor of the measure, with multiple people noting that an increase would open the offices up to a wider range of people, as currently only those with time and money are able to fill the roles. Outgoing council member John Knox White noted that members routinely spend 15 to 20 hours per week on city business. Vice Mayor Malia Vela noted that comparable East Bay cities do not face the challenges that Alameda does, notably extensive redevelopment, a municipal power company, and the management of a former naval air station. Ultimately, the council approved the ballot measure on a 4-1 to one vote, with Tony Dasog voting no. It is important to understand that the council has not voted to raise their salaries, but instead to put the issue before the voters on the November 8th ballot. For a detailed look at the discussion surrounding this issue, as well as other items from Tuesday's meeting, visit alamedapost.com slash top. The official election site of Alameda County has certified the results of the June 7th primary election. Measure B has passed, with the final tally being 56.33% in favor of the school funding issue. In terms of actual votes cast, that's 11,425 in favor, 8,856 opposed. With a 55% majority required to pass, this means the measure passed by a total of 270 votes. Compared to the county elections as a whole, Measure B did attract higher voter interest, with 40% of eligible voters casting a ballot in the race above the county average of one-third turnout. The end result of the measure is an additional $45 property tax levy on each $100,000 worth of assessed value. Measure B will provide significant upgrades to Otis Elementary School, modernize classrooms and construct full-size gymnasiums at Lincoln and Wood Middle Schools, a new pool at Alameda High School, improve athletic fields at both Alameda and Ensenal High Schools, and upgrade performance spaces across the district. For details, including the reaction of the committee behind the measure, see Adam Gillett's article on alamedapost.com. When you've been a fixture of the Alameda art scene for a decade and a half, recorded with Mickey Hart of the Grateful Dead and producer extraordinaire Brian Eno, and engaged 25,000 elementary students during the COVID lockdown, what do you do for an encore? If you're Tina Bean Blaine of Rhythmic Cultural Works, you might just head to Madagascar. Ms. Blaine has served as executive director of Rhythmic since 2010 and is now passing that torch. In May, we were treated to Uprooted, the third in the Island City Waterways series that integrated drama, dance, and music to tell the story of Alameda's history. Uprooted focused on the impact of aviation on the island and was seen by thousands in May. Bean's journey has taken her to some fascinating places, and she's not done yet. As she told the Post's Alana Dill, I looked into volunteer opportunities and applied to become a marine conservation volunteer in Madagascar at the fifth largest coral reef in the world. The Madagascar Research and Conservation Institute is based on a remote island with no electricity or internet, but it has a lemur reserve. For more about where Bean's been, where she's headed, and what's in store for Rhythmics, visit alamedapost.com. While you're there, follow the link to Pour Your Heart Out, Rhythmics Benefit Fundraiser for Youth Arts Programming, happening July 30th. After a two-year absence, the Alameda Fourth of July Parade made a triumphant return to the streets. Thousands gathered to watch the event, with folks prepping their viewing areas the day before. Horses, bands, fire engines, dancers, and more made up the 148 entries in the nation's longest Independence Day parade. The day began with a 5K run walk to benefit the Midway Shelter. 
Phil Hebda of Berkeley was the overall winner with a time of 1552, while Alameda's own Karen Eckberg took the women's title at 1801. The prizes for the parade entrance will be announced July 21st at 6 p.m. at Gene Sweeney Park. Mayor Marilyn Ezzie Ashcraft will be on hand to present the awards. For a look at parade photos from Maurice Ramirez, visit alamedapost.com slash features. This Saturday, our popular walking history tours return with Alameda's Innovative Streetcars, our three-tour series for July. We begin with Alameda's original horse cars, predating the dawn of the electric trolleys. Of course, when you've got horses doing the work and generating 20 pounds of um, output per horse per day, there is an issue to address. Dennis Evanoski will give you the straight poop on how sanitation was handled and a whole lot more. The tour starts at 10 a.m. and meets at Santa Clara and Union. Tickets $15 in advance. If you sign up for all three July tours, you'll save more than 10% over the price of individual tickets. To read Dennis's articles, visit alamedapost.com slash history. To sign up for the tours, visit alamedapost.com slash tours. If you're a fan of public art, you might want to put Bay Farm on your itinerary. Head over to 1951 Harbor Bay Parkway to enjoy Tidal Arch, a 70-foot-long, 15-foot-high concrete and steel interactive sculpture that invokes the tidal flows of the San Francisco Bay. You can find a preview of the sculpture on the City of Alameda's Facebook page. And now a look at upcoming events of interest to the Alameda community. The Altarina Playhouse presents Dr. Cindy Acker's Words That Made the Difference, Brown versus the Board of Education. This Reader's Theater production is based on actual transcripts of a momentous 1954 Supreme Court decision that overturned the doctrine of separate but equal. This timely staging happens Saturday and Sunday, July 9th and 10th. For details and tickets, visit altarina.org. This Friday, July 8th, brings the monthly Second Friday Art Stroll to Webster Street. The folks from the Menagerie Oddities Market are bringing a pop-up residency as well. Find details by searching Second Friday Art Stroll on Facebook or stop by the 1400-1500 blocks of Webster Street starting at 5 p.m. on Friday. Happy anniversary to the Thrifty Kitty. The well-curated thrift store is celebrating their first year. With all net proceeds benefiting the Friends of Alameda Animal Shelter, the Thrifty Kitty helps the shelter find homes for the nearly 1,000 lost, abandoned, and surrendered animals seen each year. Check out the store at 1509 Webster Street. For a look at needed donations and to set an appointment, visit thethriftykitty.org. Looking ahead to next weekend, another free movie night at the Alameda Landing Plaza. Saturday the 16th brings the 1986 classic Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Bring a blanket, chairs, and snacks. For details, visit shopalamedalanding.com. In Alameda news around the web, with the rise of the BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants, COVID cases are on the rise in the Bay Area, with test positivity rates near record levels. Of course, summer means outdoor activities, some of which can get rather crowded. Have the new variants changed the rules? The answer, it's complicated. The San Francisco Chronicle continues their excellent coverage on the ever-changing landscape of pandemic. For the latest, visit sfchronicle.com slash coronavirus. That's it for this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Visit our website, alamedapost.com slash newsletter to sign up for our weekly newsletter. It is free and will never sell or give your personal information to anyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Find the Postcast wherever you get your podcasts or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. I'm Scott Peeler. I'll be back next Friday with the next installment of the Alameda Postcast.